Like and subscribe, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Agricultural machines and equipment are progressively powerful and are becoming ever massive. It does not matter what is being cultivated or harvested on fields and where. Their size has long since become one of the essential factors in determining whether the harvest is enough this time for people to eat. The global industry produces agricultural machinery every year. It's worth around 110 billion euros. The European manufacturers are alone responsible for one quarter of production. Today, we are going to talk about five modern agricultural machines and equipment, so stay tuned. Number 5. Harrington Seed Destructor Harvest weed seed control is a method that plays a role when a problem like weeds escapes in-season control. After that, it survives and produces seeds when the cash crop is harvested. It is a process to destroy seeds just to stop them from germinating next year. We are hoping that harvest weed seed control can help control weeds like palmer amaranth and water hemp. These weeds usually escape into the late season and drop millions of seeds. For this process, the Harrington Seed Destructor has been used. During the harvest, this machine that is a cage mill helps to drag behind the combine. It also helps to eject the chaff from the combine that contains the seeds from the escaped weeds. Then this machine grinds those escaped seeds to a point where they pulverize and become unable to germinate in the next year. Then the Harrington Seed Destructor emits it into a thin fine powder back into the fields. It was manufactured and developed in Australia. In Australia, it is used for small grain crops to control the problem of weeds resistant to non-selective herbicides. According to sources, they can pulverize target weed species between 95% and 99%. There is another factor for the success of HSD that, if you want to destroy the weed seeds with HSD, then the weed seeds should be on the plant before dropping down in the field during the time of harvest. The weeds that keep their seeds later into the fall are more suitable for the control with Harrington Seed Destructor. The original design of this machine is large and its price is high, but now the manufacturing company has introduced a new option that is one-third of the price. This new option is known as IHSD, or you can call it Integrated HSD. It is installed through a retrofitting kit into the rear of the combine itself. Everyone uses this IHSD as it works the same as the original one. Number 4. Combine Harvester The crops like wheat, barley, and rye that we grow in our fields are only partly edible. The seeds we see at the top of each plant are known as grains, used to make products like cereal and bread. But the dry coatings of these seeds are called chaff and are not edible. Therefore, they have to be ejected from the seeds along with their stalks. Before, these modern agricultural machines weren't developed or were not in much use. The agricultural workers used to harvest the crops by applying different series of laborious operations, one after another. First, they had to cut down the plants with the help of a long-handled scythe, which is a cutting tool. Then their next step was threshing. In this process, they had to separate the edible grains from the inedible chaff with the help of beating the cutstalks. To make the crops suitable to use in a mill, agricultural harvesters had to clean the remaining debris from the seeds. This process requires a lot of strength and time from people. Now, due to the combine harvesters, this process has become easy and handy. These modern combine harvesters do this whole process automatically. You just have to simply drive the combine harvesters through the fields of crop grains. They automatically cut, thresh, and clean the grains by using the rotating blades, sieves, wheels, and elevators. After that, the separated grain collects in a tank that is inside the combine harvester. The tank periodically gets emptied into the carts that are pulled by the tractors alongside. On the other hand, the remaining chaff and the stalks spurt out from a big exit pipe that is at the back and fall back down on the ground. Number 3. Agricultural Crop Spraying Drone We all try to get better at some point in our life. Isn't it a powerful word with a brilliant idea? This word makes us see the world with a new perspective. We try to do things with extra motivation to be better. In fact, we start rethinking the way we are doing things. To spray pesticides in mountainous and deep vineyards, some agricultural workers wear a 20-kilogram backpack and walk in the fields while spraying them with all the chemicals they carry around them. Some use noisy and expensive helicopters for spraying pesticides, as it is a hard job to do as a human. But now this job has become handier, as there are drones to use for this purpose. 
Such drones are a new face of agricultural modern machines and equipment. They are built for pesticides and fertilizer spraying with a capacity of 60 liters. It is way better because it is 50 times faster than the old process, manual spraying. And it is twice as cost-effective as using an expensive and noisy helicopter. The main reason behind its usage is that it is helpful to prevent powdery mildew from forming, which is the main issue with wine grapes by applying preventative fungicide application. When it comes to better fungicide prevention results, it is five times more precise than a helicopter and it makes less noise than a helicopter while spraying. It is also very useful as it uses less pesticide, which leads to the natural yield. With a downward radar, its spraying quality has much enhanced because it helps to keep it at the right height above the wines. It helps in growing better roots because of the no soil compaction and it also increases the safety of workers. Drone agriculture is environmentally friendly and can be powered 100% through electricity. The Airboard Agro, agricultural crop spraying drone, is tested in Northern Europe and Germany vineyards. So, its results show that it helps to decrease the cost. It can spray more accurately, which helps in increasing their yield productivity. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image that you come across, just send it to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. This picture was sent from one of our subscribers. It is a flamethrowing tractor that helps to kill the weeds. These tractors come with a giant flamethrower attachment that is connected to a tank of propane. Propane spits fire down the gaps between the rows of crops just to fight against the unwanted plants. This process of killing weeds is called flame weeding. Well, let's talk about these tractors precisely. Number two, flame throwing tractor. As everyone prefers organic farming, this non-chemical weed control process has become more popular and so has flame weeding. Organic farmers use flame weeding as an effective alternative to pesticides. These flame throwing tractors are used in the process of flame weeding. They are regular farm tractors equipped with torches, propane, and a row of flamethrowers. These flamethrowers help to throw flames at the fields to kill any unwanted debris or hindrances. To make it all clear, flame weeding is not a process that just sets fire to a field of crops. It is more than it seems. The people at Flame Engineering, a company that manufactures flame weeding equipment, claim that flame weeding destroys the cell structure of plants in the weed leaves, so they do not grow and perform photosynthesis. They are commonly used for soybeans and corn crops. This non-chemical method to control weeds has been used for centuries. It is used at the beginning of a new growing season or after the crops have been planted. The specific temperature of the flame only damages the cell structure of the plants and does not consume the weed. Number 1. Clive, the Fruit Picking Robot Automation has become a need nowadays because of the shortage of seasonal fruit pickers. The growing community of companies in the past five years is manufacturing fruit picking robots. These robots are developed for both hard and soft fruits, such as strawberries and apples. They exploit imagination processing techniques, advanced vision systems, and artificial intelligence. Some of these robots are already on the market, while others are in development and will launch in the coming two years to hit the competitive market. Australia's first fruit picker robot named Clive will roam up and down rows of fruit trees when harvest begins this summer in the orchards of Turnbull Brothers and H.V. McNabb near Shepparton. This machine must pass all the tests first to see if it is a feasible alternative to human labor. This machine, named Clive, has some cameras and sensors that can detect where the fruit is in the tree and whether this fruit is an acceptable piece to harvest, whether the color of this fruit is right, etc., etc. Then, it instructs a suction arm to pluck off the fruit like apple, stone fruit, or pear with the help of vacuum suction. If this machine in the future gets more developed and becomes more advanced, then we will get more productivity from it each year as it will become an iconic alternative to human labor. Well, let's see when this machine will be introduced. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you found it interesting, I would much appreciate it if you would comment down below about the video and leave a thumbs up. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for getting updates related to our latest videos.